Hello and welcome to Erbil. Welcome to this exclusive interview with Masrur Barzani. He's the Prime Minister of the Kurdish Regional Government of Iraq. Thank you very much for Thank welcoming you. us. Thank you for having me. Mr. Prime Minister, I want to begin uh, with the situation in uh, Baghdad. We've seen weeks, months actually, of uh, protests. We've seen a new Prime Minister being uh, nominated, Mohammed Alawi. Uh, we've seen calls for early elections. What's your take on the situation in Baghdad? What we see in Baghdad is actually uh, uh, the result of bad governance for the last 15, 16 years. And many of the protesters that are now protesting and coming to the streets are asking for reforms, for tackling corruption, for a better government, which we fully support the legitimate demands of people. But sometimes political agendas are mixed, which has made everything a little bit more complicated. In fact, uh, the previous uh, Prime Minister, Mr. Adil Abdel Mahdi, he tried his best, but unfortunately he did not enjoy the support that he deserved from other political factions to continue and implement his agenda. And I was, but uh, uh, we don't think that he was responsible for all the problems that the country has. I hope that the current uh, or the uh, uh, new nominee uh, for this post that has been tasked by the president, Mr. Alawi, will enjoy much more support from both people and also the political faction so that he can be successful. Are you optimistic that this will happen because many people are saying it doesn't stand much chance? Uh, I don't know. We have to wait and see. There are some people obviously that are opposing uh, the uh, nomination, but there are many that also are supporting him. So we hope that uh, if he ends up to become the prime minister, we hope that he will be fully committed to the full implementation of the constitution which I believe is the main demand of the majority of the Iraqi people. Well, they also demand uh, new elections, and so does uh, Grand Ayatollah Ali Sistani. Would you be in favor of such new elections to maybe have a better sense of where people want to go? Whatever the majority of the Iraqi people want, obviously, we would support. But uh, it's not just the election, it's the entire uh, system that we have to be very worried about and uh, our concerns are that there has to be an inclusive government, it has to be a representative government. So the elections uh, must uh, aim to that direction. If not, could there be a collapse of the Iraqi state? Well, I, I don't know. I hope not. I hope that there will be uh, a good solution uh, for, the, for the sake of people that have suffered so much. Your uh, government, the administration here, had been in talks uh, to find a deal uh, with Baghdad, especially on the oil. It seems now everything is on hold. There's no deal on the horizon because of the situation in Baghdad. That's true. Uh, at the beginning of my cabinet, I immediately went to Baghdad with a set of proposals, with a very strong team from my cabinet. We continued to negotiate with uh, Mr. Adel Abdel Mahdi and his cabinet. We uh, reached a very good proposal uh, and we were waiting to finalize that agreement which we believed would serve both the rest of Iraq and also Kurdistan region. Unfortunately, the situation in Iraq uh, was not helpful, so everything was put on hold. But I hope that uh, uh, the uh, next government and the next prime minister will also commit himself to finalizing that agreement which we think is the best thing for, for the country. Right. Uh, obviously, uh, there's also a lot of talk about U.S. troop uh, withdrawal uh, following uh, the killing of Iran's top general, Qasem Soleimani, by uh, the U.S. a month ago. Mm -hmm. um, I understand uh, that you're not in favor of this. Do you think uh, that now uh, that some weeks have passed, uh, this is not something uh, that will happen, that U.S. troops will indeed remain in, in Iraq, or do you think they could still leave, and are you still worried about that prospect? Uh, let's remember, the U.S. and the coalition troops are here based on invitation from the Iraqi government previously. And they have been very helpful in fighting all of Iraq, and uh, of course, uh, our Peshmergis in Kurdistan, in fighting ISIS. Uh, we do believe that their presence is still very much needed because ISIS is a major threat. 
It is not completely defeated. It's not eradicated. It can re, uh, regroup and uh, attack as they have in many different places. Uh, we think that the decision that was made, of course, it's a nine binding decision by the parliament, but uh, they rushed into such a decision. We hope that there will be a way to find a mechanism that uh, both the Iraqi government and the coalition forces led by the United States can be satisfied with the presence of the U.S. troops uh, and the rest of the coalition in this region, which we think is very much needed. Because of uh, Iranian uh, strikes uh, after the killing of Qasem Soleimani, uh, both in Iraq, but also here uh, mm. at the uh, U.S. Uh, and uh, Western military base, there is talk by the U.S. government to bring Patriot anti-missile systems. Have they asked you to do this? And would you be in favor of such a system to avoid further strikes? Uh, U.S., like any other government, has the right to defend itself. So wherever the U.S. Uh, uh, military bases are, I believe it's up to them how they want to put a defensive system to protect themselves. And of course, their allies and uh, people that uh, have been, uh, let's say, supportive of this overall fight against terrorism in this region, that's, what, that's why they're here you know, to begin with. So basically, I mean, it's really a call for the United States. I mean, they have to decide how they're comfortable. Have they asked you? They have been, they, they have been talking about uh, uh, putting a defensive system here, but uh, obviously uh, they are waiting to talk to the Iraqi government and get permission from the Iraqi government. But from that. your end, this would be a well, welcome move? Uh, it, uh, yes, of course. But uh, again, you know, the decision has to be made by Baghdad. But if it were up to us, we wouldn't mind. ISIS, uh, you mentioned the fact that they're on their way back. Uh, the U.S. Special Envoy uh, to the coalition, uh, which has restarted operation against ISIS after a pause, said that they were up to 18,000 operatives in Syria and Iraq. Do you agree with those numbers? Can you give us your assessment of Daesh's comeback? It is very difficult to give you an accurate number, but uh, we have information around the same numbers. Uh, 18,000, perhaps more. But I can tell you for sure that ISIS has more members today than they used to have in 2013 before they started to attack Syria and Iraq and created their own caliphate. So uh, there is a great possibility for reemergence of ISIS. Uh, they can uh, regroup very easily and recruit because all the root causes that led to the rise of ISIS and the collaboration of people with ISIS still exist. There is no political stability, there is no economic prosperity, and there is no strong security. And these are the factors that lead to the rise of terrorism. Of course, with the, with the absence of all of these, there is a great possibility for ISIS to come back if they're not contained and confronted uh, strongly by the rest of the coalition forces and the regional forces. So uh, I mentioned the fact that the operations of the coalition had resumed after a pause. Uh, have they fully uh, resumed? Would you want more action from the international uh, community? You're going to be going to the Munich Security Conference. Are you going to ask for more support from the international community saying you're not definitely paying definitely, enough attention? Definitely. ISIS needs to be confront, confronted in the strongest term. And, uh, but it's difficult now because they are not uh, holding territories like they used to in the past. So it requires a combination of both military and intelligence cooperation. You have to identify where they are and then uh, take actions against them. But actions are needed. Right. Uh, where action is needed is also between you and uh, the central government in mm -hmm. Baghdad, especially in the so-called disputed areas between That's here right. and Baghdad. There seems to be a security uh, vacuum there, not enough cooperation. And this is precisely the areas, the Sunni areas, where uh, Daesh uh, once thrived and seems to be making a comeback. This is one of the uh, points that we negotiated with Baghdad and we proposed uh, to Baghdad uh, that there has to be a much better cooperation between uh, Kurdistan's Peshmerga and also the Iraqi military especially in these territories, in these areas that are called disputed, because there is a, there is a vacuum. 
of the presence of security in those areas because of tension that existed between us and Baghdad after 2017. So these areas need to be protected. And our proposal is that both Peshmerga and the Iraqi military forces should close the gap and come back to a system that was in place, which was called the Joint Cooperation Mechanism, to uh, once again uh, put that in place and have a cooperation uh, base between Peshmerga and the Iraqi military so that there will be no room for ISIS to maneuver in but those areas. Is this realistic uh, when uh, the so-called Shia paramilitary uh, uh, are in control of a lot of territory and some people say of Iraq? Aren't there a you threat know, to uh, this new cooperation well, you're calling for? Uh, let me explain. I mean, they have fought ISIS in the past. But we are talking about finding a solution how to reduce the presence of ISIS in this area. So any issue or any element that is not helpful, we have to uh, look for alternatives. At, at this moment, the best alternative is for the Iraqi military, precisely military and Peshmergas to fill the gap because many of the local people may not be happy with having other elements in, in, in their areas. Obviously, uh, those elements are linked uh, to uh, Iran. I, I mentioned uh, the uh, strike here uh, a month ago uh, after the killing of uh, Qasem Soleimani. Was it a good decision by the U.S. to take him out? That was a U.S. decision. I you welcome speak. it? I cannot speak on behalf of the United States. Uh, have you received uh, threats from Iran since the strike, or have you been in touch with them to try to avert uh, such things? We've from tried them? our best to uh, stay out of this confrontation. Iran is our neighbor, United States is our friend, and we don't want to escalate or see the escalation of this confrontation attention. We think that everybody has to play a role to de-escalate and also to try to contribute to the stability in the region, and that's what we've done. Do you think an all-out war between the U.S. and Iran has been averted? I hope that there will be no, no war. It, it doesn't serve uh, anyone, and especially it doesn't serve the people. And unfortunately, we are very worried about the escalation of this confrontation uh, any further. So I hope that uh, everybody will uh, seek, let's say, a peaceful negotiation and talk to uh, resolve problems. Right. Uh, I, I want to have your reaction on comments made recently uh, by uh, the head of uh, Lebanon's Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, said that uh, Qasem uh, Soleimani uh, was called uh, by uh, the then uh, president of the Kurdish Stan region, uh, your father Masoud Barzani, uh, when ISIS was uh, getting close to Erbil in 2014, and he said, you know, uh, that uh, the president was very worried and was calling desperately uh, for help, and uh, that uh, he's been disappointed by the reaction after his killing. What's your response to that? Well, I think the way that he acted and the way that he talked, he uh, discredited himself. Uh, somebody like him, at his stature, should know better how to talk about other people. Uh, obviously, that wasn't true, and I was a bit surprised about the responses of many Arabs, not only the Kurds, but many Arabs. Because all those who know President Barzani, they know that he was leading this war against ISIS, and he was, for most of the time, in the front lines, fighting with the Peshmergas against ISIS. Actually, he was the key figure in uh, breaking the myth of ISIS and defeating the ISIS. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously at the beginning, you know, uh, there was a very difficult situation. And Iran came to your And help. Iranians did help by sending some ammunition, but it was the help that they claimed was much exaggerated. Obviously, you know, we have thanked everyone that has supported us during that uh, difficult times. Uh, but of course, I mean, there were many other coalition forces that helped us in that time. Uh, however, we have to bear in mind that it were, it, there were Peshmergas that were fighting in the front lines, and it was our Peshmergas that were losing their lives yeah. to defeat ISIS and defend not only Kurdistan, 
but the, the, the rest of the world from this, this threat. Right. Uh, quickly, I want to get to the situation in Syria. We've seen a recent escalation between Turkey and uh, the Syrian uh, government. Uh, there's the situation of the Kurds there. Uh, that's certainly a concern uh, for you. What's your take on the situation in Syria right now? We are worried about the situation in Syria for a number of reasons. First of all, we don't think that uh, any escalation in military confrontation would help or will, will help the stability of the, of the region as a whole. Uh, the uh, uh, recent, uh, let's say, invasion of Turkey in the region has also complicated the issue further. It was a bad uh, decision? Uh, I, I think it, it is not helping the long, uh, let's say, long-standing peace in the region. Especially uh, that uh, you know, there are some elements from the Syrian opposition forces that are involved uh, which are not uh, welcomed by the local populations. Mm. And uh, we are all very worried about the escalation of this problem. Uh, we are also worried about the flow of refugees as a result of the current problems in, in Syria. We have additional 20,000 refugees from Syria that have crossed the border and came into Kurdistan. Uh, we already uh, were hosting about uh, 250,000 Kurdish refugees from Syria. So, uh, yes, and people are also worried about demographic change in the region. I recently made a trip to uh, Ankara and I met with President Erdogan and other officials. They assured us that they have no intention of uh, changing the demography of you the region. Them? Well, I, you know, I, I hope that uh, there won't be any demographic change because I don't think it will serve uh, anyone. I want to get to the situation here. Uh, we've talked about uh, the protests in uh, Baghdad uh, for good governance against corruption. Uh, there have been a number of protests in the region and actually across uh, the globe. Uh, your cabinet has been there since uh, June. How much of a priority is it for you to make sure to root out corruption and to bring about better governance because Kurds, as well as others, are calling for it? That's, that's true. In fact, this is the slogan of my cabinet. We are tackling corruption. We have, uh, it's in our agenda. We have announced our program that what we need to do. One is the reform, a general reform in financial and administrative areas of the government, good governance, obviously. Uh, uh, tackling corruption is a priority and we have succeeded so far to stop corruption. And we are reviewing the uh, consequences of any wrongdoings than uh, may have happened in the past. So uh, I believe that we have been very successful until now, but this is a long process. Uh, we are committed to fighting corruption and to hopefully bring more transparency to the people, which they really need and deserve. We have to build the trust uh, with the people by making their government to be at their service and to be trusted by presenting every all the facts and, and be transparent to them. So I, I do believe that we have come a long way. Uh, we still have a lot more to do, but uh, I'm, I'm very pleased with the results so far. Right. Uh, last question. Uh, obviously, uh, there was uh, this referendum on independence, uh, many people are saying it was a major uh, blunder to organize uh, this referendum, not in principle, but because of the timing and the opposition from the neighbors, from your allies, and as a result, clearly, uh, there was a backlash, a confrontation uh, with Baghdad, and the dream of an independent Kurdistan seems to be uh, now really uh, out of the question in the near future. So what's, what's your, your reaction? Question? Well, was it a mistake to hold such a referendum? Absolutely not. It was not a mistake. First of all, we conducted a referendum to see what our people have to say. It was the expression of a desire, and it was a very democratic process. People only expressed what they want to have, but there was never a practice of declaration of independence. So practically speaking, it was just the expression of people, they said that's what they want, and we left the doors open to negotiate with Baghdad. But unfortunately, it was Baghdad's reaction that was very illegal, that used forces against a democratic process. 
because Kurdistan was still legally a part of Iraq. We had never declared independence. Let me just uh, remind you that you know about that. So no, it was not a mistake. It was an expression of a desire, and there were reasons for that referendum because of the mistreatment of the Kurds by Baghdad's governments, and because of how uh, the Kurds were marginalized and pushed aside. And of course, we have. Uh, always said that we have a constitution that Baghdad needs to fully implement. We do believe that uh, uh, the, uh, the full implementation of the constitution is one of the main reasons that we can uh, stay together and, uh, and build the country. Uh, unfortunately, Baghdad did not want our partnership and we said we don't want to be subordinates because our relations with Baghdad is based on partnership and power sharing. And of course, whenever Baghdad is ready, we understand we understand the reality of the, uh, of the world and the region. Uh, whenever Baghdad was ready to negotiate with us, you saw that we were the first to go to Baghdad and negotiate about better terms of relations with them based on the Constitution. So it was not really the Kurds that violated the Constitution. It was the previous regime of Baghdad that violated the Constitution and forced the Kurds to conduct the referendum. You're talking about the reaction from Baghdad, but yes. what about uh, the neighbors and your closest allies, starting with the US? They we are did not about, support you. Yes, they, they did not. They, they let you not. down, essentially. They did not support us. Uh, that was very unfortunate. So uh, that was maybe are, the mistake. Yes, the, I don't think it was a mistake. I think people made mistakes by not standing with what's right because, you know, basically interests played a much better role or a bigger role than the values and principles. And that's what happened. Otherwise, I don't think that the Kurds did anything wrong. And you believe there will be an independent Kurdistan? Believing desire is something and the reality, reality is something else. Today, our goal is to have better relations with Baghdad so that we can get the most for the Kurdish people and with that, for the rest of Iraq. Prime Minister Masrur Barzani, thank you very much uh, welcome. for welcoming us uh, here uh, in uh, Salahadin near Erbil, the capital of the Kurdish region of Iraq. Thank you very much for watching this exclusive interview here on France 24.